there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. So glad to be with you today. Please grab yourself a cup of tea and stay with us on this special, special day that America observes on the calendar. Take the day off in order to remember. And if there's anything I would like to uh, get across to our viewers today that Memorial Day is not for picnics. It's to remember those men and women who gave their lives that's what I mean. They gave their lives in defense of this country, and we want to uh, really remind you of that. And also, as I've talked to different crew members here, it's interesting how I think all of us have some family member who has served in the armed forces, and we're going to talk about those today. And my special guest is uh, Bodie DeAndre, and he is the son of our president and founder, uh, Bob DeAndre. But I've known this gentleman since he was a toddler and has led one of the most impressive lives I've ever come across. He has been in the police force, retired from the police force, and also been in the Navy Reserves and still is. And you know what I wanted to talk to him about? Because I could talk to him for two or three hours, but we don't have a lot of time. But I said, I want you to tell me what is it that makes somebody have a yearning and a desire to be a first responder, because that's what these people are. And if you haven't met him, I trust you. I just can absolutely assure you that to know him is to love him. And I've got both Stephanie and Wanda in the kitchen, and I can hear the applause all over the world with these wonderful viewers we have. You love these girls. We're going to do patriotic, very simple patriotic recipes. So if you do these with your children, while you're doing, tell them. Tell them what Memorial Day is all about, okay? Uh, and so uh, just let me remind you that we are viewer supported and we appreciate every dime you send into this network and to this program. And so thankful, so thankful for your generosity and that you do, you know, when the Lord indicates for you to give something to this program, you do it, we appreciate it. But uh, now uh, let's go to the kitchen and we're going to show you some very simple patriotic recipes, I think you'll want to do them yourself. So here we are in the kitchen. Get your children, get your grandchildren. These are going to be the easiest recipes and they're going to be so much fun. And Wanda and I are here today because we both have family members who served. And Wanda's going to tell you about her dad. I'm going to tell you about my family members and we're going to just share super simple recipes. She has red velvet cupcakes that we just prepared from a box, right? right. Yep. The kitchen looked like a murder scene this morning because our flame <laughs> ripping made such a mess with the red velvet. <laughs> it was hysterical. <laughs> it was such a mess. Oh, so God, she's funny. just going to frost them with yeah. um, regular frosting. Mm -hmm. You can make frosting. And plus she has uh, red and blue sprinkles. There you go. Right? And yeah. while she does that, she's going to tell you about her dad. Oh, okay. served, so I have right? to do two things at once. Yes. And, oh boy. <laughs> okay, well, you know, my dad served in World War II, and I remember as a child uh, my father telling me that a couple things. Um, one was he said, You never, you never, um, I know, I'm talking to this. <laughs> I got I'm it. I'm like, You can't I just talk, it. you have to talk and work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't want to do that that way. Oh, that's kind of pretty. Yeah. But um, he said, You never met an atheist in a foxhole. He said, they, they would tell you, oh, I don't believe in anything, but when the those yes. grenades go off yes. and everything happens and... You better believe they're praying. They are. <laughs> and um, this is going to be kind of a mess. But anyway, my dad um, got lost in... He, was, he served in Okinawa, and he got lost in the jungle, and he got very, very sick. And um, the natives found him and took him back to their huts, which my father... Eventually he had pictures of them. I don't know how he got them, but my brother has them at home. Mm. And they nursed him back to health and then took him back to his platoon or wherever. I don't even wow. know where they did. But that was really all I remember. That's like a it. movie. I know it should yeah. be, right? Mm -hmm. But my brother has all his, you know, awards and I was just glad to have my dad back, you know. Of course yeah. I don't even know if I, I wasn't even around then. I wasn't yeah. even a twinkle in anybody's eye by that time. So it yeah. You, that's all I have. All <laughs> so I have. So this is how simple this is. Cupcakes, <laughs> store-bought cupcakes that we made, frosting, and yep. sprinkles. So easy. Get your kids involved, So right? you don't really need a recipe for this. Mm -mm. Don't ask it's me. That <laughs> <laughs> it's that simple. It's that simple. Okay, you I have get it. Um, cream cheese, two bars of cream cheese, and I have two six-ounce 
packages of Greek yogurt. I'm just gonna mix those together. I had two pie, um, my brain has shut down crusts this morning and I rolled them out on some flour and I put them in a pan and I baked them for about 10 minutes. So that's already done, okay? Yeah. We're just gonna take cream cheese and yogurt. I'm gonna mix them together. We're gonna top the pie crust with that and then we're gonna put some strawberries and blueberries and strawberry glaze together and put it on top. Super, super simple. So my story, First, my, my dad served in the Navy, okay, many years ago, and my son served in Iraq. So um, I have a picture of my son. We can show. This is David. That's in Iraq in front of one of Saddam Hussein's palaces. And then I also have a picture. He has formed a brotherhood, of course, with his um, service brothers, and they meet every year, and they oh, get wow. together, and they have a good time together just to... I mean, it's a, it's a bond that will never be broken. So if you want to talk about pray without ceasing, mm -hmm. he was in Iraq when they first went in. If you all remember that, the tip of the spear, that was my son. And he would call on a satellite phone because back, you know, it was many, quite a few years ago already, if you can believe that. And um, he didn't have, they didn't have their cell phones, but they had a satellite phone and he would call on the satellite phone. And you're talking about pray without ceasing. Yeah. He'd call and talk to my husband, and he'd say, Dad, do you hear that in the background? And he mm -hmm. could hear the bullets, hear oh. the firing. And he would be that, like, son, what are they shooting at? And he said, Dad, they're shooting at us. Oh, yeah. Talk about hitting your knees. Yep. Hitting your knees. So, yep. yes. So Can that's why that. Memorial Day is so important. Like Arthlene said, it's not a day for just picnics. It's a day to remember really is what people have done it's and it's not just the people who are over there doing it it's the people who are here home waiting for them too. their spouses and their children and yes. their families and people have given their lives yes who've given their for lives us. and for for people our, who've for never our met freedom, us for yes. our freedom and that's why i'm so thankful really i'm thankful for um the ones who've given their life and who have served because Man, I, I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for that. Mm -hmm. And we all should be very, very thankful. And I'll have to say, too, while we're at it, because we can talk about it, because mm -hmm. it's our time. Yeah. <laughs> so we can do it. Strawberries. Um, I am thankful for our policemen oh, gosh, and for how yes. they serve us and take care of us. And I'm, I'm, I just want to do something for them. And Bodie has yet. done both. So how amazing. Yeah, that is He's amazing. He's an amazing person. Okay, so I have the pie crust. I have the cream cheese and yogurt on top. Now I have strawberries and blueberries. It calls for raspberries too, but Arthlene said they were too expensive. So. <laughs> you can't get away with anything so, on this show, man. We're just gonna rat you out. So That's we're and it, it you is. know we talk about frugality. Uh, so yeah, we do. So I'm gonna put some glaze here. This is just strawberry glaze. This is strawberry and blueberries. Yeah. Just I know put. where you're going with this one. So good and so simple. Like you could easily things. do this with your kids or your grandkids or your your neighbor kids or wh whoever. Just get them in the kitchen. I promise they'll remember it. Alexa still remembers when she was young and we used to cook together. Well, and now she's making some of the things that we used to cook. So, isn't that amazing? Yeah, how our kids grow up. My grandson just got married, and I'm like, when did this happen? How right? did he get so old? Oh my gosh! Which means Look I'm at getting this. older. Delicious. Are you coming over? No. Oh, our, I thought our son was going to come over. Okay. So, we've talked about our family members, we yep. talked about, and this is a lot. <laughs> this is ginormous. This is hysterical. Maybe we don't need okay. all Okay, you might not need this many, you might need oh. a bigger pan and more pie crust, I'm oh just saying, my. okay? That's that is a lot. Funny. This is going to feed the crew, though. Too funny. Okay, so if you want this recipe, you can contact Wanda. She's not going to have a recipe for this, okay? This is just... Buy the cupcakes, buy the frosting, buy the sprinkles. She will have. So the information will come up on your screen. Yep. Get it however you want to. Mm -hmm. Please pray for our military members. Please yes. Please pray for all of our first responders. Yep. Amen. And uh, that's about it for the kitchen, and we'll see you next time. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. They were brothers, they were soldiers, they were
were sailors and marines whose love for this country meant more than anything the sacrifice of service sometimes requires more they came in peace and now they walk on peaceful shores all right i am so pleased to introduce to you uh bodie deandre if you've watched the network very much i'm sure you've seen him <laughs> in the last 40 years from time to time. Yes. Never in uniform, though, maybe? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah. Possibly. Yep. A long time ago. And How um, are you? You know, I'm just kind of impressed with all these ribbons and oh, medals. Just a little something-something. Yeah, well, well congratulations. <laughs> we're all very proud of you, and uh, we're going to talk about his service both in the police force and in the armed forces. But I think we have some pictures of your family, don't we? Yeah, so I try to include my family on everything I do. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell my wife that all of this stuff that you're looking at, uh -huh. she actually earned it. Uh, yes. To, to keep the we home fires that, going and we? the kids, uh, she actually is deserving of all of that. We, we do forget I just that. wear it for And her. there she is, a very beautiful lady. She and is very beautiful. I love that uniform gentleman standing in front of the well, flag. There's something very, very yes. uh, just inspirational about that. And... Uh, I would have to say your life uh, has been an inspiration to me. This is... Uh, that was just over here at McDill Air Force Base a few months ago mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when I did my last uh, re-enlistment. So getting close and to the end of my career. And you're still in. I'm still in. Amazing. I just hit my 20th now how, year. Is this uh, the Na Naval Reserve? Navy Reserve. For how mm -hmm. many years? I just hit 28 years. And uh, you're retired from the police force. I did. I retired from the sheriff's office, mm -hmm. the local sheriff's office. Uh, to take over the family business. Yes. Electrical and contractors. Still a young man. Yes, DeAndre so, Electric. <laughs> and I still help out. The sheriff was gracious and asked me to stay as a reserve deputy. And so um, I'm still certified law enforcement and help out uh, over there when I can. I've always said that uh, I would want this man by me in a, an emergency. Well, I bet I you're enjoy very quick serving. on the trigger. I enjoy serving. But you know, there's so many things we could talk about, just mm -hmm. so many. But I want to zero in on what makes you do this. First responders, they run in when everybody else runs out. And also, I want to talk about your mom, who's been in heaven for quite a while. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you something. I've never told you this before. When you joined the police force, I saw an agony in her face. Yeah. I really well, no, did. she did. Yeah. I think every mother would. Yeah. Uh, she was a real prayer warrior. Yes. And um, there's no doubt that has been a great part yeah. of your safety and all. But why do you want to? Have you ever analyzed why did I yeah, do it? Yeah, you do. And I, and I think those of us who are in first responder type fields, mm -hmm. I think not only do we analyze it, but I think we do it on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. uh, to go back to the original intention on why. We got in this business because, mm -hmm. you know, let, let's be honest. Nowadays, it's easy to get jaded. It really is. Oh. And so we want to make sure that we keep our our edge razor sharp mm -hmm. and that we realize and remember our original intentions. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it was it was interesting as a young boy. Um, I have the best of both worlds. My mother's side, of the family, we trace our history back to the 1790s in the United States. And my dad's side were immigrants from Italy. So I've, I have that big, different kind of dichotomy of an upbringing. But on my mama's side of the family, we've had people that we know served in uh, the Civil War, actually mm -hmm. prisoners of war that were released and had to walk Civil all the way war. home. Uh, my great-grandfather served in the Spanish-American War, which was interesting because I actually got to serve in Guantanamo uh, in Cuba uh, for one of my uh, deployments. Um, so I've had relatives. My grandmother had all three of her brothers and World War II at the exact same time. How long were you at Gitmo? I, I remember that. I was there between uh, 2009 and 2010. I, I know, you are there quite a while, and it, yeah. it's you, like you couldn't leave the building? Well, you almost. can't leave the base. I mean, <laughs> uh -huh. it's you can't just like waltz into the... Do you ever get a little... This is what... I enjoyed it. It was a beautiful place down there. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, there, There's something about that prison that kind of stands alone. It still does when I think about it. Yeah, well, see, it. a lot of people don't understand that the, there's the base, which is a regular naval base, and then you have the Joint Task Force area where the prisons are, and they're completely separate. It's on the same contiguous piece mm -hmm. of land, but there's a different, a complete different um, 
feel and a different part of uh, the mission and what we do there. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of interesting. So what did, what did you gorgeous. do there? Are you so my keep job, them from escaping? That's it's kind of interesting. <laughs> my job there was I was in charge of the uh, expeditionary court complex. So when we had the prisoners, they would come to where I was, and I was in, uh, in charge of security for all the attorneys and for the court complex uh, down there in Guantanamo Bay. Now, is this in Cuba or just outside of no, it? No, it's in Cuba. Mm -hmm. yep. Were you in Iraq? I was in Iraq in 2004 uh, when I was with the Seabees. And during that time is when we found out my mother had Lou Gehrig's disease. And she actually passed away a week before I came home. I remember that. It's a little difficult, but... You know, when you say goodbye to your family, in the military, you prepare. If I go away, I may never come home. But you don't prepare for you coming home and your relatives not, not being there. Mm -hmm. It was kind of a reversal of what we our expectation. Were, when you were a, a little kid, did yeah. you think, I want to be a policeman, I want to no, so be in the Navy? I, I was fascinated with the military. Uh, listening to my grandmother tell stories about her brothers and um, some of the romantic type movies you know, from oh, World yes. War II that I saw. Uh, I actually talked to a Marine Corps recruiter in high school and a plan to go really? on Marine Corps. And I really felt like God was leading me to go to Bible college. Mm -hmm. And so I just didn't show up when I was supposed to for the Marines and went to Bible college. <laughs> the and truth then, is out. <laughs> yeah. And then once I got out of Bible college, went into the ministry. Um, and then Lord led me into law enforcement. And after I got into law enforcement, I, I really felt like I wanted to serve in this capacity in the military. Mm -hmm. But at the time, there was no openings. And so I had to wait for the Gulf War actually to happen you for the job no that I do. No openings. Not I, for the, the security job oh, that I do. for what you wanted, yeah. Yeah, so I had to wait for the Gulf War to kick off before there was openings for me to come in. So I've been serving consistently since 1993. So you, do you look at it as a calling? Yeah, so I... For me, again, for me, I believe that, that God's calling on my life is very special, and it's a calling of service, you know, and, yeah, and I, to serve civilian and law, and law enforcement and serve in the military. That's service. So. And we have so few people, if you take our population that have really served in the military, there's a small, small mm -hmm. group that actually has served our, our, our country. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times when you grow up in church and you talk about a calling, you just think it's to be a preacher. I think mm. every, every admirable type of uh, endeavor yeah. would include a calling. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and especially in, medicine. When, in public service, people need to read Romans chapter 13, mm -hmm. where it specifically talks about uh, the ministers that are part of the government mm -hmm. uh, that take care of and protect, you know, that group. What, uh, what kind of mates did you have? Uh, did some of them join to escape something? So, yeah, so my journey, I'll, I'll talk about my journey. When I came in, um, I called him my sea daddy. Mm -hmm. He was the one that took me under his wing and said, you don't talk unless you're with me, and you just do what I do, and I'm going to help you with your was career. He, uh, 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 he was also law enforcement civilian side and was a Navy reservist. He was a chief, and I still keep in contact with him. He's 81 years old. Now, he still did, lives local. Why did he? You don't and talk to And after all anybody. these years, after all these years, um, we, we still keep in contact. Uh huh. And um, a, a great man, retired from the U.S. Marshal Service, um, and served in the military. What what a great guy! So he was kind of the one that helped take me under my wing. But I will tell you this: you know, as a master chief, um, one of the jobs that I do is is provide counseling uh, for the junior sailors and those things. And I, I see the different reasons why people join. Uh, some of them are to, to escape their home life. Mm -hmm. well, one of my friends, uh, a beautiful black female, is, is the command master chief on a, uh, on a warship. And her home life was so bad, she ran away to join the Navy. And the Navy became her family. Mm -hmm. um, since then, she's had a wonderful career and has done so well. Some kids do it for the money. Some kids do it for training. Uh, because it, in certain circumstances, the government will pay for your college and, you know, well, and help you out in that route. Are you familiar with the GI Bill? Sure, I am. Second it, World it, War. It actually, so the follow-on to that is the Montgomery Bill, 
which helped pay for my four-year degree. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the post-9-11 bill is also helping uh, with my children to afford their college as well. So, Well, um, they should. The government should do that. So I, I don't know that I, I, I see it as an entitlement. Um, I see it as if you look, a lot of the people that serve now are second, third, and fourth generation military people. And so I, I see it as an investment. When the military does things like that, they're investing mm -hmm. on further generations mm -hmm. to draw them into mm -hmm. uh, what we do. But what you've been a part of, the police force and the military, it, it's signing up for maybe I won't live that much longer. It's very diff. Yeah, so I'm a guy that's an alpha male different. that likes the adrenaline <laughs> rush. I'm not going to lie. Uh, there, there's that part of me. Now, as I get older, I'm settling down a little bit, and I got some aches and pains. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there is that adrenaline rush uh, that, yeah, I, I kind of enjoy that environment. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm again, thankful that you're, you're still here and you're in good shape. But when you you're know? doing it for the right reasons. But um, I see, I know your parents, too, and yeah. I knew your mom, and I know your dad very well. His office is down the hall from mine. <laughs> and uh, I, think of, I think of parents, because I'm a parent. Sure. And so uh, when you join something that... There's no question. You're putting your life on the line. Sure. Um, but oh, I know, from I know. what you I've, said, it sounds like uh, it was I know a, what a I've bold decision. Through. Yeah, I you know what, what I put them through. More probably law enforcement than military. Mm -hmm. uh, but even my wife. I, we, had, we have a standing order still that if I'm going to be late, at least call her and let her know. Because I, I used to do it. I'd be funny. I'd say, listen, I'm not going to be home on time, but you'll see me on the news something that we were involved in or this or that. I think if you talk to my wife, one of the worst times that we had was in Iraq. Uh, we took some casualties to my unit. Um, and I was right there just a few yards away um, uh, when they were blown up and, and not being able to call home, but the word already spread to the news that my unit took casualties. Um, and, and to hear my wife's side of the story was getting no news. She's like, I, I know we had casualties, but I don't know if it's my husband or not. And to wait for that phone call a day or two later was very, very difficult. So I know what I've put them through. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very, very hard on them. Well, I'm so glad that you're just in such good shape. You're in a new phase of your life. You're vice president of an electrical company now, yeah. DeAndre Electric. Second generation electrician. Mm -hmm. Completely different. You stay with me. We want to show them something that's rather meaningful. And when uh, we come back, I want to tell you about my relatives that have been in the military. Stay right there. You stay there. <laughs> My friend, we do want you to remember today. That word's through the scripture a lot. To remember this, you know, that Ebenezer that they raised, that you remember. Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. I was going to tell Bodie, I had an uncle in the First World War, yeah. and he was a preacher, and he came back, but he had a wounded eye that always was very prominent, uh, a reminder of the conflict. And then I had a, an uncle in the Second World War, and he was on a ship in the uh, Pacific that was torpedoed out from under them. He saw somebody's uh, friends die. He never was quite the same. But I was just a little kid. And when I would stay with my grandmother, uh, we'd be out playing, you know, and have the biggest time. She calls in to pray. Well, none of us wanted to pray. We wanted to play. And, uh, but every day she prayed the same thing about her son on a ship in the yeah. South Pacific. And she'd pray, oh Lord, pour oil on the troubled waters. Oh, yeah. Every day, pour oil on the troubled waters. And I've got grandmas out there, great grandmas. I've got moms out there that that's what they can do. Mm. And I know your mother. Mm. I know you're probably alive because yeah. of her prayers yeah. and all. And so I wanted to make this day, or this program, just exactly what you've helped us to make it today. The purpose of Memorial Day is to remember. 
Yeah, war and combat changes you. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes we see injuries as internal, sometimes external. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we can do is we can support those that have served or still mm -hmm. serving, uh, pray for them and strengthen Absolutely. them. Absolutely. It's very, very important. Absolutely. And um, one of my favorite presidents, probably yours too, was Ronald Reagan. And he loved America. Mm -hmm. He was just so upfront about that. And he loved the military. And he did everything that he could for them. And sometimes you can look back and uh, see some of the things he said that I think some of our young people need to know today. I, at the top of the show, I said, you know, if you're going to fix some cupcakes and put red and blue sprinkles on, talk right. about why. Just talk about why. Yeah, so okay. I've, I'm on my fifth president that I've served under. And it doesn't matter which party. Mm -hmm. uh, we serve our country faithfully. And we execute our duties and we do it to the best of our ability. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're in good hands. We have a good young next generation coming up. Um, and I feel very confident for the future. Now, our armed forces, uh, we don't draft anymore. I remember no. when they drafted. Mm -hmm. But we're still getting good talent. And uh, I still see heroism. And I see the, the dedication and the commitment. And I would say our nation is very good hands. Yeah, and I would... Uh say that because we only enlist mm -hmm. that makes a big difference yeah. uh, if you draft somebody and they're kicking and screaming they might not make a lot of times best. we always say that this generation looks back and that was the best one before and, uh, mm -hmm. and these kids now don't know i'm telling yeah. you these kids now are just as dedicated just as motivated um they encourage me to keep going i am so glad to hear that they really do uh, because I've admitted I'm a news junkie, and mostly all you get is bad news. And yeah. uh, when you hear from somebody who should know yes. that we've got a great, great group we do. of we really kids. Do. And the thing I want my audience to do is really pray for them. And if you do not have anybody specifically in any of these branches, you can certainly pray for uh, those who are in it, that God would keep them safe, bring them home safely. Uh, I hate war. I'm sure you do, too. Yeah. And I mentioned earlier a president that really loved the military, loved America, Ronald Reagan. Here are his words. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. The only way they can inherit the freedom we have known is if we fight for it, protect it, defend it, and then hand it to them with the well-taught lessons of how they in their lifetime must do the same. And if you and I don't do this, then you and I may well spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it once was like in America when men were free.